Hey, my name is Ben. Thanks for stopping by. So today we're just going to replace a standard thermostat and we're just going to go through the process really quick. Hopefully answer any questions that you might have, make it a little bit easier for you. So the first thing we're going to do is actually just turn power off to the furnace. You can do this either on the switch on the side of the furnace or via a breaker in the panel. And so once you do that, now we're ready to go up and look at the thermostat itself. And most of the covers on thermostats just pop off by prying a little bit and it'll pop off just like that. And then uh, always go ahead and take a picture of what you have going on here before you take anything apart. And we're just going to kind of look through these really quick and see if it's pretty standard. And I think it is. So you can see up here on the top left, it's a W and that is connected to the white wire. So white is W, that's easy enough. And the green uh, down here is connected to the G terminal. That's for the fan. The W is for heating, by the way. And then here we have a Y terminal, which is connected to this yellow wire. So that's easy to remember as well. Uh, and the yellow wire controls air conditioning. And then we have a red wire right up here. And that red wire uh, is the power coming up from the furnace. So that's uh, 24 volts coming up here. And then the thermostat decides which other which thing to turn on. So if it takes the power from here to the W, uh, then that turns on the furnace. From the R to the G turns on the fan. From the R to the Y turns on the air conditioning. Okay, a little bit of background for you there. Now you'll see that there's an obvious jumper here going from the RH to the RC. So the red wire is going to the R, but then there's a jumper between RH and RC. That is, uh, you're 99% of the time going to need the jumper. So all thermostats will either come with a jumper or they'll have it built in internally. Like the Nest thermostat has a, a jumper in it and it senses whether it needs it or not. Um, but you're almost always going to need this jumper. And so it consequently doesn't matter which terminal you connect to the red wire to. You can connect the red wire coming right here to either the RC or the RH. So uh, no big deal there. So we're going to go ahead and pull these wires off of here and then we'll be ready to switch to the new thermostat. You can see we have our new wall plate mounted on here and it's pretty simple. We have all of our same terminals available, the Y, G, R, and W. So those are all the standard ones. Now if you had another wire like hooked to the O or something, that means you probably have a heat pump situation and it's not as standard. Probably a good idea to consult with a professional if you have more than just standard wiring. Now the one other thing I'll mention just for fun is that if you didn't want to use batteries with your new thermostat, if you had an extra wire here in the wall, so typically it would be like blue or something, uh, you can hook that up to the common terminal assuming it's not being used for anything else and then also hook it up to the common terminal in your furnace and then that will power the thermostat without having to use batteries. So in this case though we're not going to do that. So. We will just hook it up as it was. You have to replace the batteries once in a while, but it's not the end of the world. And you can see right here, we also have our uh, jumper between the RH and the RC, and we can hook our red wire to either one of those, and it's no big deal at all. If you want to confirm that you don't, if your old thermostat uh, did not have the jumper installed, and it had wires connected both to the RH and the RC, then you definitely would want to pull this out and wire it as it was previously. So there we have everything hooked up and make sure that there's uh, nothing that is obviously crossing in here and uh, you should be good to go. So we're ready now to attach the cover and see if everything's working. One of the nice things about having batteries in your thermostat instead of powering it from the furnace is that it'll store the options that you save in it if it's a programmable thermostat. Um, obviously some will have you know varying models of thermostats might save it, might have a little tiny battery built in, but a lot of times if you don't have a battery in there, if the power goes away from the thermostat, you lose your settings. So for what it's worth. All right, we're gonna go turn the power back on on the furnace downstairs and then be ready to test. I like to test the fan separately at first, so just turn the fan on. And yep, we can hear that come on like it's supposed to. So that's good. Now, uh, I would test the air conditioning, but it's too cold outside. You really don't want to test the air conditioning if it's like below, you know, 40 or 50 degrees, probably 50 degrees outside. So don't test that till you're in the proper season. 
if you really want to test it, <laughs> uh, you can go outside and disconnect power to the air conditioner. There's usually a switch to shut off the air conditioner and then turn it to cool and have someone stand out there and listen for a click. If it clicks when you turn on the cooling, then uh, you'd also ob obviously have to turn down the temperature. That means the contactor is closing inside of the air conditioner because that's not powered from inside the air conditioner. It's powered from the transformer in the furnace. Um, so if you hear a click, then you know that it's set up correctly, if that makes any sense. But probably you should just wait till it gets a little bit warmer outside to test the cooling. So we'll go to heating here now and turn our temperature up. And I can hear the combustion blower starting already. So I will verify that the heat comes on. Yeah, it's coming on. So we are all good to go. This thermostat is set. All right, so that has been how to install a thermostat. Now it's a very basic system, but if you have uh, questions, be sure to leave them down in the comments below. And maybe I'll try to make a video in the future addressing something close to your situation. So definitely gonna try to have more advanced ones coming up. Uh, if you wanna check a little bit more about the RC and the RH. Uh, so if you have um, a transformer in your air conditioner, that's the only time that you would need that. So if you wanna investigate, you can look inside of your air conditioner and see if there's a transformer. So uh, there's most likely not gonna be, so you don't have to be too worried about it. In fact, I actually made a video showing an air conditioner that had a transformer in it, so I'll link that uh, up here or wherever, a card or in the description, and uh, you can look at one that has one in case uh, you wanna learn a little bit more about it. So definitely thanks a bunch for watching. If this video helped you out, please hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe down below for more videos like this one. And hit that bell icon to be notified about future videos. Thanks a ton for watching, and we'll talk to you in the next one. Thankfully, summer is coming. <sighs> Still a lot of snow around, though. See ya.